So, hi, Famke. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, it seems like every time uh, we get to meet you, some kind of a psychologist, psychiatrist, it's like... Psycho, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you name it. I've been it. But how does it feel that, you know, you're always the professional woman? Oh, God. Uh, I'm not very professional in my own life. <laughs> <laughs> But, no, I've, if this is the first time I've played a psychologist. Now, tell us about Hide and Seek. I, I call it a psychological thriller. It's, uh, everything is in people's minds. You never really see, you know, you don't know what to believe. Um, you don't know what's really going on. I mean, I sat in the theater half the time with my hands I, over my eyes. Oh, really? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that on camera, no, but it was really... Because was the really thing scary. is, that's so hard to know when you're, when you're in a movie. Like, when I read it, I, I thought it was really creepy, but then you never know how it comes across, you know? Robert De Niro, how does it feel to play with such an icon? Yeah, well, it's best not to think that <laughs> while you're acting. Because our, our relationship in the movie is very much of, you know, two equals, people who are two who have a tremendous amount of respect for one another and have known each other for a long time, and he was kind of a mentor to her. So in that respect, it helped, because I could be like, he's kind of a mentor to me, and you know, in life, in terms of acting and stuff. But then when the camera stopped rolling? I can't. I mean, I have to do whatever I do on camera, off camera. I can't go back and forth. It's too weird. I am really a big fan of you for what you did coming here. You know, there's a lot of people from outside of the United States who want to come here. It's like almost the ultimate dream of, of anyone, any actor around the world, to come to Hollywood, right. although you do live in New York, right. uh, <laughs> um, and make it here. I mean... Do you sometimes pinch yourself when you look at what you you know accomplished so far? No, I probably should, but you know the terrible thing is that I think that mostly, and that's one of the reasons why I actually don't live in Hollywood is because people I don't it's so unhealthy to compare yourself to anybody or whatever. But I find that when I'm in Hollywood, I go like, oh well, I should be doing better, and I should be you know, and then you get caught up in that whole thing, which is terrible. So. Um, now I've just learned not to even think about any of it. Your accent is flawless. I mean, this is one of the things that, you know, most actors who come from outside the country have a lot of problems with because as an actor, your language is your tool. Yeah, absolutely. How do you work at it? I mean, I came to the States, I had a thick accent, and I, when I decided to become an actress, I thought I have to get rid of it because it'll limit me too much and what am I going to play? So I, I worked with a dialect coach on it. When you're, like, uh, annoyed or angry or something, all of a sudden your Dutch accent comes back? Not so much anymore, no. But really what ends up, honestly, what ends up happening now is when I speak Dutch, the first day that I'm back in Holland and I'm with my family, I sound a little American, which is really annoying, I'm sure. And then it goes away. But it's just the first couple of hours or whatever of the first day. And then, you know, it's just sayings in my head. I, I just translate them from English back into Dutch now. Of course, everybody forgot that about your past, but you once were a model. I once was a model. I try really hard for people to forget that, but yes, I once was a model. Do you think, it, you know, for a lot of models, and we see all those reality shows now with models, is that today like the perfect platform to become an actress? It's never been. It's always been like a stigma. If you were a model, then don't bother, you know, you're going to be a lousy actress, basically. Um, so, no, I think that wherever you come from, you just have to, whatever your past profession, whatever you did before, I mean, just study and, and try to take it seriously and put in the work and, you know, it's, it's not handed to anybody on a silver platter, even if it may seem so. And um, your looks are not going to carry you through an entire career maybe the beginning, but then sooner or later you're going to have to, you know, have the chops to do it. So when you wake up in the morning and you look at your life and what Femke has uh, achieved, how does it make you feel? I don't look at it that way. I probably should, <laughs> but I don't. Um, I, you know, I just, I live my life and I, I most, mostly now try to live in the moment and not think about what I've done in the past or what I'm going to do in the future. Just really enjoy the moment which is like enjoying time with my dog or you know what I mean with my friends and just being grateful to be alive. Thank you so much. Thank you.